Well, hello there. Today we're going to be drawing a dog. You can do this either with pastel or digital or even just pencil. Uh, it just depends on what you have to work with. Again, don't, always, don't worry about what you don't have. Work with what you do have. So uh, get out your supplies. Uh, this is the reference photo we're going to work from. Uh, it's uh, from an online uh, app where people submit photos uh, just to be sketched and, and uh, I really enjoyed doing this one. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get to our drawing. Okay, uh, I'm going to be working on a white surface, although I'm going to change that. I'm working uh, with uh, Procreate, a digital app, and uh, right now the process is just sketching uh, the dog out. Uh, again, I can't emphasize enough how important learning contour drawing is, because this is pretty much what I'm using as I look at this dog and just uh, sketch the general shapes, and then as I keep going back through, I kind of refine and add, uh, add more shapes in. Now, now once I have the basic sketch down, you notice I, I'm kind of making it a little duller in places, and then I'm coming in and I'm going to start to uh, color it in, almost like uh, with, uh, with charcoal. I'm going to be using pretty much gray and white tones. You notice I've changed the background because I, I normally do that at the very beginning and I forgot with this drawing. Uh, I like to draw on a toned surface uh, almost always when I'm using pastel. And uh, so uh, once I have uh, gone in and done the basic sketch, next thing I do is I come in and I'm just laying in the lights and darks right now, pretty much. Uh, again, for the most part, except for that little bit of brown and tan in the, uh, in the neck and around the ears, I'm sticking with uh, just black and white and shades of gray because I want to get the values down. Now, once I have established all that, uh, I will come back in. But part of the reason I'm, I'm using a, a tan background is that does a little bit of the coloring for me. Uh, so that's again another re good reason to use toned paper when you can because uh, then it, it sort of does a little bit of the work uh, for you and you don't have to worry about uh, all of those uh, details. So uh, I'm, I'm getting close to finishing but I, I, I'm doing a little bit of work around the nose and, and what I do is I just keep looking back and forth at uh, my uh, reference photo and I'm matching values, I'm matching shapes, uh, I'm looking for the lights and darks. One tip for doing this is if you, if you squint your eyes while you look at your reference photo, uh, a lot of times it's going to help you uh, see the light and dark patterns, because that's what I'm trying to, to get down at this point, is uh, just a good feel for the lights and darks. And uh, then once I do that, then I'm going to begin to come back in. And this is where, if you're using pastels, you can come in and, and I'm just starting up over the eyes. And there's no magic place uh, to start. Uh, it just honestly just is what feels right. Uh, I will come in with various shades. And uh, you'll notice sometimes I'm pulling up that same reference photo over uh, on the right side of the screen, and that's because I'm uh, using the reference photo to pick up the colors that I want. And that's one of the cool things with digital apps. I can kind of match the colors, so I go in with an eyedropper tool. Uh, but uh, obviously this is a very quick run-through. I'm, I'm not giving you a, a lot of uh, detail as to how I'm doing this. Uh, aside from just uh, go in, establish your drawing, establish the lights and darks. Now, what I'm trying to do right now is get a hair effect, and it honestly didn't work very well, uh, and it especially doesn't look good in the uh, video here. It looks a lot better in the actual drawing, but for some reason it didn't translate well uh, into video. So, uh, uh, but what... Uh, I'm doing there is kind of a fine detail and that's that's the last thing that I uh, handle in a picture like this. Uh, I come back in and begin to suggest hair and uh, it's in, in a digital app you have uh, brushes, at least in Procreate you actually have brushes that you can draw hair with but uh, they don't always work very well and uh, honestly I wasn't pleased with the results even with the actual uh, picture 
because it just didn't it didn't look realistic. Uh, best way is to be patient and use a very very fine uh, pencil or brush or if you're working with pastels think in terms of pastel pencil uh, and uh, you don't have to draw every single hair in but you want to suggest hair by going to places particularly where the hair is longer and uh, adding those details in. Now I, I'm working there around the snout and beginning to again establish those values a little stronger trying to suggest some small hair uh, and some of the whiskers. Now if you notice the nose has a little bit of brown and tan in it so I'm trying to get that and get some of the highlighting in. And you just keep going back in and, and hitting more detail. It's uh, it's kind of a refining process. Think of it of, of going from a, a very blurry picture to a sharp focus. Uh, each each pass, uh, you add a little bit more detail, and uh, you know you can you can work and work and work. And I'm just about done with this. I'm, I'm about out of time. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up here in just a second. I do add a little bit of a, a uh, uh, ground underneath the dog just to give it uh, something so that it doesn't look like it's floating. But uh, And that's just with a texture brush. You'll see it in a minute. I just uh, uh, create a layer underneath the dog and throw that in very quickly. But that's pretty much all I'm going to do uh, today. I hope uh, this at least inspires you to try drawing yourself. And uh, I'll be back with something else uh, next week. So uh, have fun, keep drawing, and uh, thanks for watching. I'm Jim Pence with See the Light. And remember, don't forget to have fun.